Hi guys, this is Jackie Vantine. And I'm Lance Vantine, and today we are going to be going over how women should not pursue men. So I'm going to hand it over to Jackie in just one moment, but some of the things we're going to unpack is a little bit of Jackie's past, of where this did happen. Uh, some of the conversations I've had with some people that I know where women have pursued the man and how it really deflated the man's masculinity. Uh, but Jackie, do you want to open up with a scripture? Yes, I want to open up with a scripture before I tell you about my past experience pursuing men. So uh, this is in Genesis. Uh, this is Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 20. And it says, And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. So earlier in that chapter, it says that God looked at everything he had made and he saw the man, which was Adam, and he said, it is not good for man to be alone. He said, it's good. Everything that I've created is good. The stars, the animals, the plants, everything, the man, but it's not good that he's alone, right? So God decided he's going to create the woman. And in verse 20 said, 21, it says, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So what happened? He caused him to go to sleep, which is kind of like in surgery today. Jesus created that a long time ago. Um, he put him to sleep and then he opened his rib. He took out his rib and he sewed him back up and he created this woman. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Flesh, She shall be called woman hey because she was taken out of man. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So... Going into my past, okay, I I idolized marriage. I idolized a husband. I thought um, this is what's going to make me truly happy. This is my um, greatest desire. And so uh, I would date, habitually date. I would go on dating apps like Bumble and all these different date, dating apps that I don't necessarily recommend, right? Um, but I, I did that and I went on dates with... Uh, men that said that they were Christian went to church every day or not every day, every Sunday, but they were not living the Christian life. They didn't know God. They knew about Jesus, but they didn't know him personally. They didn't have a relationship with him. A they lived an ungodly lifestyle. They, they indulged and delighted in the sin that God hates. They were not born again. They didn't have God's heart to hate what he hates and love what he loves. And I put myself in a, a risky position. I had sex outside of marriage which caused a lot of trauma for me. And I understand now why God puts that rule there. It's for our good as a good father. He doesn't want us to endure the consequences that come with that. Um, and so uh, I would pursue men. And in pursuing men, I forsook pursuing God. And the Bible tells us that if we seek the kingdom of God first, all these things will be added to us. All the things that we want, all the things that we think about, oh, money, this, all the things that we need. And God knows that it's not good for a man to be alone and it's not good for a woman to be alone. So it's good for a man to have a wife and a woman to have a husband. That's a need. But for some people, right? Unless you're Paul or like Paul. Um, so instead of pursuing God and letting him bring that person into my life, I decided to pursue men. And in doing that, I took my eyes off Jesus and I reaped the consequences because I was trying to force God's hand instead of just letting go and letting him do what he does best, which is bring people together, which he did from the beginning, Adam and Eve. Hello, he's the best matchmaker. He created a man and woman and he knows your type better than you know your type. All the men that I dated do not even come close to this amazing man of God that I have as my husband and how compatible we are. It's like on so many different areas. 
seriously, God blessed me, but it was when I started obeying him and focusing on him and his kingdom and doing his work and waiting, serving while waiting, uh, purposeful waiting, right? Mm -hmm. Not just waiting idly, oh, when, 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 mm -hmm. serving God and his kingdom. So that's a little bit of my past. Um, and I'm going to give it to you, the man who pursued me. All right. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. And, uh, you know, what Jackie is saying is absolutely credible. And um, sometimes it's unfortunate our fleshly nature thinks, well, that's good for you, but I'm still going to go out and try it. And you're going to come up with the same uh, <laughs> results uh, as happened with Jackie. Uh, but what we're trying to do with this is just to help forewarn and save you from a lot of trouble that can, can go uh, prevented. Uh, so... You know, I, similar, not similar story, but throughout my life, uh, you know, I had lots of opportunities, but it always came to one of two things for me particularly. It's either they were extremely attractive, very attractive, but they were not godly in the slightest, or they were extremely godly, but I wasn't attracted to them. Uh, we know everyone's beautiful, everyone's made in the image of God, but as Jackie said, God knows our type better than we do, and that even goes with physicality. Uh, he knows, you know, it's not like you're going to get everything you want, but he knows the color of hair you prefer, you know, the height and um, personality and, and all of that. So you don't need to try and work a trick. God is for you and not against you. Uh, but when I had seen Jackie, she was the most gorgeous woman that I have seen, uh, first and foremost. But what really drew me in was how godly she was, and she knew the word. Uh, there aren't a lot of women out there that have come across my path, if any, who had what Jackie had and, and who she is. Um, there, there's only one Jackie, <laughs> and Jackie Vantine now. Uh, but beforehand, I just would be sitting around and I'd be like, man, it just seems like wherever I go, it would be more of a, I have to look back and I have to be dragging someone along to catch up with me where Jackie is on this, on the same level. And this isn't a prideful thing. It's just where we're at with our hunger and thirst for the Lord. We are on the same level and we can move together in unison forward. One of us is not pulling the other person uh, forward. I even know this where the role is flip flop, and I would dare say it's 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 way more widespread where the woman nowadays is dragging her husband to church, and that should not be the case at all. The man needs to lead, but unfortunately, women are feeling the need to lead in Christian homes because a lot of Christian men are being lazy. Boom. <laughs> Chakalaka. Uh, so. Anyways, you know, for those of us, uh, for those of you who don't know our story, just a brief recap. I had a, I have a YouTube channel. My name, Jackie, has her own. It's Jackie Style Vantine now. Uh, but we, I went on YouTube to reply to some comments, and then her video popped up as a recommended video. And then that's when I began kind of the scouting process. I began seeing, okay, she's just drop dead gorgeous, but does she really know the word, or is it like a lot of these YouTube people where they, you know. They're fluff, they water things down, they say what even secular people could say. You know, I want a woman of God. I don't want a, a, a disguised woman of God. So I went through some of her videos and uh, the answer came very quickly. So I had to <laughs> do nothing other than go find her on Instagram. And the Lord blessed me because this was the time when her YouTube was only at 1,800 viewers. The next day it got to like 12,000, the next day it was 32, and then by the end of the week it was at like 52 or something. So I found her early and went on her Instagram, just said, hey, I really appreciate what you're doing for the kingdom. I appreciate how you have been um, just authentic with who you are. You embrace yourself. It's very rare. So thank you. And she replied and said, uh, thank you. I can see you're doing like ministry work as well. And the Lord's using you. And I just hearted the message after that. And uh, I just, this I was coming off of... Uh, uh, a relationship from six months prior, who was my only other relationship, because um, I purposely waited um, to meet the right person. And unfortunately, it was uh, a counterfeit scenario. And we will speak more on that as time goes on with both of our paths. I have a counterfeit too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so 
anyways, I ended up just leaving the message and I just said, God, you just take care of it. And then uh, a week later, because I didn't know where she was, a week later, uh, I see her post a picture with her friend at a restaurant. And I said, is this at, at blank restaurant? And she said, no, it's not. And I said, oh, this looks like where I'm from. And I listed my city and she DMs me and says, I'm in blank, which is 45 minutes away from me. So this recommended video from this random person I don't know is living 45 minutes away from me. And we also have my church's pastor was her college's or a college professor. So what are the odds of that as well? So we ended up meeting in person. I invited her to my Bible study group. Uh, but, and I think, no, I actually invited you first to like coffee or lunch. And then I saw an hour later after the message, I was left on red. And so a day goes by, two days goes by, I don't hear anything. I'm like, all right, I guess it's not meant to be. I'm not going to force anything. Uh, I'm not going to try to just work it out in my flesh. Lord, it's up to you. And then she replied on the third day. And uh, that's when I was getting ready to fly up to Michigan. But I said, hey, I'm flying out Friday, but Thursday night we have a Bible study group. Would you like to come? And she said she'd love to. And then from there, we things really kicked off. And so... Uh, Jackie, I want you to share some of your mind behind some of this, but, you know, I did the pursuing, and I think there's two important things to understand. The man needs to pursue, but the woman needs to open herself up to the point of accepting a, per a pursuit. Yeah. And showing the man that she is interested, at least to figure out a little more about you. Because if the man is just doing all the pursuing and the woman is just not doing anything or opening up, first off, the man probably shouldn't pursue. But second off, if the woman wants the man to pursue and he's not getting those good vibes, he's not going to follow through. Mm -mm. So do you want to share some more kind of on just what <laughs> your process was like through that? Or Yeah. So honestly, with men, I was so disappointed. Okay, ladies, you know what I'm talking about? Men just never knew how to plan a date. Just a date, just a simple date. Uh-oh. No, they couldn't plan it, right? I mean, they, <laughs> they would forget things. They would forget that eight hours have gone by and we haven't eaten anything, you know? Um, they wouldn't really try. There wasn't, you know, these little details. Girls like details, they're detail or the little letter and the flowers. And so going into this, I mean, the first, when I went to his Bible study, and he was like teaching. I was like, wow, I'm very impressed, whatever. But I was like, I wonder if he's going to ask me to eat after, you know, do, do something after. Most guys don't think about those things because they don't think about things. Um, Fellas. Saying, most guys don't think, okay, about these things. So I'm expecting he's not going to think of these things. So I go up there. He's talking to people because people talk to, you know, the teacher after and, and, and I'm like, well, you know, it's getting a little late. You know, I have kind of like, he's like, you're heading out? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I'm kind of hungry. I'm going to see if maybe there's some food around. Do you know any good places around here? And I'm thinking he better ask me to eat or else I'm never going to see this man again. Because I'm not going to be disappointed with another man who just doesn't know how to pursue. And he's like, well, you know, let me look at my phone and. He's looking through his phone. He's like, well, this is a really nice Italian place around here. If you want to go to this one, you want to go. And I'm like, all right, game on. Here we go. Let's see if he... And every time we would hang out, I would be like, he's going to fail me in some way. Oh, he's probably not going to do this. When I went to go stay with his family for two weeks in Michigan, I got to the airport. He's picking me up and I was like, he's not going to have flowers. I, I pray he better have flowers. Because I'm I'm so used to being disappointed. It's not that I'm high maintenance. I'm just, I, I, I hope for those things. You know, and I've been disappointed too many times where I was the one planning dates. I was the one, you know, uh, pursuing the man and texting him twice. I was the one, you know, doing all these things that a man should be doing, you know? So he, you know, I was waiting around for the man, whereas when a man's pursuing, he's waiting for the woman. Mm-hmm. So, lo and behold, I get to the airport and he has flowers, a bouquet of flowers, beautiful bouquet of flowers, okay? So, it's not just the pursuing of communication, but it's also planning things out, being detail-oriented, making her feel special. And likewise, the girl too, because there were times in our early dating that I said, hey Lance, 
let me invite us to eat at Chick-fil-A. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Right? It's it not good. it's not all about the woman, you know? And I think a lot of women in the feminist movement and whatever, they think it's all about no, you also have to pursue back, right? I got him like his favorite little candy and I would surprise him, right? It's not just all about, oh, you you kiss my my feet and the ground I walk on because I'm the woman. No, but you do that for each other. You pursue each other, so. Mm -hmm. That's very good. And I just want to add for the ladies to understand too that if you do end up pursuing the man, knowing how a man's mind works and from stories I know, uh, he's going to take advantage of that because he doesn't feel like he has to do anything. So if the woman's pursuing the man, two things are going to happen from the man's perspective. Number one is the man is going to feel like he's lost his masculinity in the sense he didn't have to pursue. This thing just came to him and uh, he doesn't feel like a man because men like to hunt, right? Mm. Uh, we like the hunt. We like to to be tested. We like to try and see, can we, you know, get this person, if you will? I mean, obviously, we want to do this in a biblical way, but we love the pursuit aspect. But when that's not given, we we start to feel, you know, less masculine, like we don't have to do anything. And then we get into this state where um, we feel almost like depressed slash discouraged a little bit, but especially unsure, like, okay, this just happened i didn't have to do anything and then what has a tendency to happen is off of that we are we are viewing all this and we there may be unsurety uh you know what even when you're born again and have believed jesus christ lord and savior and repented of your sins you that might have happened where this woman just entered your life and she did all the pursuing and you did nothing and you're sitting there and you're thinking as a man wow she cooks for me uh she like plans a date she'll give you know she'll scratch my back and just do all this stuff for me. Why would I need to look elsewhere? You know, I don't really need to put forth any effort because I already have it in the bag. And so that can go through the thought process of a man, but especially with secular or lukewarm Christians, what will also go through the mind of a man is, wow, okay, I've got this girl here that I know is just head over heels over me. I could ask her to marry me and she will. But since I didn't have to do anything, I'm just going to keep her here, enjoying everything that she gives. And I'm just going to see and venture around here if I can pursue after anyone else. Mm. And that is the selfishness of man. It's that we receive this thing. We didn't have to put any effort in. And then, you know, we get curious. Okay, this is in the bag. This is for sure a thing. She's head over heels. She wants to marry me. I'm not really sure. So... I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of venture around. I'm not going to do anything necessarily sinful, but, you know, I'll just kind of look at my Instagram followers and I'll go to here and these places and just see, does anyone else give me attention and, and see what comes of that? So I just want to warn you that it is important not only for the man, but also for you ladies to allow the man to pursue you, especially up front. Jackie said eventually there's kind of this mutual uh, agreement where you know Jackie got me some candies took me to Chick-fil-a and she did other things got me a gift like bought me a book and so we're just such kind things but initially I had to put forth the work consistently to show her that I'm serious about this uh I'm really thinking about marriage in the long term this isn't just a little fling thing mm -hmm. so I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add there or... well I mean we represent as husband and wife and a couple we represent Christ and the bride, the church, mm -hmm. right? And the church did not pursue Jesus first. No. The church Good responds point. to Jesus' pursual to it's the good. church. And she she pursues him back, right? So we love because he first loved us. That's the Bible. We love, I love him because he first loved me. Mm -hmm. He. I pursue him because he pursued me first, Right? It is biblical. It is, but what he's saying is biblical, right? And men are hunters by nature. And I've, I've, for some reason, God gave me this analogy a long time ago. A man wakes up in the morning to go hunting. He gets his gear on. He goes out at five o'clock in the morning with a granola bar, nothing in his stomach. 
And for eight hours, he is, he's trying to get a deer to mount on his wall. And he, blood, sweat, tears, bugs and everything, scrapes in the whole shebang. And baby, he finally gets that deer. He goes back home. He mounts it on his wall. He sits down with a cup of coffee and he feels really good. He feels like a man. He feels like he accomplished something, right? The next day, <laughs> next day, or no, let's just say a different, this, this never happened. That same man wakes up in the morning, scratches his butt, has a cup of coffee, opens his door, and right on his porch, he sees a deer literally just die right there. Right in front of his eyes, right on his porch. Right there, fresh, fresh died. He's going to mount that thing on his wall? Absolutely not. Why? Because he did not work for it. He did not earn it. Didn't there was it. no pursual. Men are wired to pursue. They want a challenge. Yes. So it's not playing games. It's literally how they're wired. It's just how they are. That's why men are super into sports while women are, but not as much as men. They want a challenge. Men love fixing things. Men love puzzles. Men love, you know, uh, uh, working on broken cars. I don't want to work on a broken car. I want a car to drive in and go do my nails, you know? So... That's pretty much it. We don't want to go super long into this, but um, ladies, you are worth being pursued. Men, you are worth being pursued back and getting a response from a woman. So don't waste your time. Know that you know that you know about a person or move on because God has better. Don't settle for less and miss out on God's best. That's right. And he is for you. He's got that person. If you had the gift of marriage, which most do, he knows the perfect timing, the whereabouts. And when you just trust him and focus on the preparation for the other person, that person will be ready to pursue as the man. And that woman will be ready to receive the pursuit from the man. And so uh, God will work it all out in his timing. And we hope this video was a blessing to you. And until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.